Huge game, Raf. Looking forward to it. Off air, we're talking about how Chelsea done last year. I used the words, I thought Chelsea done amazing. Losing, losing Hazard, you know, couldn't buy any players. I thought Frank done amazing. You slightly disagree? Yeah. I mean, I mean using the word amazing is a bit like saying Leeds had the best ever performance <laughs> of, uh, of a newly promoted side. It's just, You've a, had bit, time to think about it's that. just a bit exaggerated. I think they did really well there. Of course, the top four is going to be really difficult for them. They did it. You have to give Frank Lampard and the team a lot of credit for that. But they didn't exceed expectations by a margin of, you know, suddenly being in contention for the league or going far in the Champions League or winning any of the Cups. So let's just uh, keep this into perspective. Oh, they didn't. Come on, they did do any. Come on. Well, I think if you look at the teams that didn't make the top four, like Arsenal, mm -hmm. who, you know, have this great manager and, and Arteta had the chance to buy players... Chelsea, for me, have exceeded expectation. Yeah. And you think now it's like, well, what does Frank Lampard do now? What is the next step? Because he's mm. already sort of got into the top four. Mm. Um, is he going to win the league? No. But I think certainly getting closer to Liverpool, um, which is what City would want to do. Um, I think I, I like Frank Lampard. I like the way he's going about it. I think he's put pressure on himself now in bringing these players in. But if you look at the sort of front six for, for Chelsea, it's better than, it's, it's as good as any other um, team in the league. Mm. What did you make of their start to the season then, Rafa? Because they got the result at Brighton, but some Chelsea fans are actually disappointed with their performance overall. Well, I think that a little bit of extra, they had a bit more resilience about them, and they went on to win this game. And I think if you're not 100% convincing, but you go on to win a game, that is always a really good sign for any side, because you know that this Chelsea team can still play a lot better. The only thing I would say about Chelsea watching that game is they've now brought a forward in Werner, who, you know, is, is great technically, he's, 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 he's quick as well. There was a lot of long balls up to him. He's, and he, he said it, didn't he? Oh, I've never played against big defenders like this. I think Chelsea need to change the way they play with, with, with their forwards. They're, they're used to a Giroud, a Drogba. He's not that player. So I think tactically, they need to sort of figure out how they're going to get the best out of a forward like Werner, who's not going to be sort of get on the flick-ons. And that's the one thing I know. There's still a lot of long balls up to the forwards that they need to change. They need to bring in the Pulisic, the Havertz, the, the Zietches, and, and, and create more sort of clever clever play rather than sort of being more of a direct team. So how, how did Leipzig get the best out of Werner then? And, you know, going to Andy's point there, how do you get the best out of him and Havertz? Well, this is a really interesting question because some people in Germany think that Werner is best when he plays as a second striker, mm. slightly on the left, off a more orthodox target man. At Leipzig, it was Yusuf Paulsen or Patrick Schick. At Chelsea, it could be uh, Giroud but, uh, or even Tammy Abrahams. But at the moment, um, that's not the system that they play. But I think we see a lot of fluidity in the system. I think mm. um, having spoken to, to Werner a few days ago, the idea is that he's not going to be in one position necessarily throughout the season, that Chelsea, with all the amazing talent that they have up front, will find different solutions, different formations, according to the needs of any game. And I think there's always a bit of a danger there that you can become too flexible and nobody really knows what they're doing. But if you get it right, it'll make Chelsea, for all the reasons you mentioned, mm -hmm. Annie, one of the most difficult teams to play against because of the variety that they can bring to the team. Yeah, we'll chat to you more about Werner and uh, Havertz in just a moment in our key clash. But before we get on to that, um, the goalkeeper situation at Chelsea, because Kepa's still under fire for the goal conceded. Despite getting a 3-1 win, Chelsea conceded a goal, Leandro Trossard with the shot. And people are arguing that other goalkeepers would save that. So what does Frank Lampard need to do? Are they going to get Mondi from Rennes? Because that's the link that's been made. Yeah, it's looking at as if that deal is going to go through. Not in time, I think, for Sunday. Um, I think Kepa will find himself under pressure, even more pressure with Mendy coming in as another option. Uh, but of course, there is something about you know public perception. The moment a goalkeeper especially is being considered weak or at fault, people will magnify those flaws. And perhaps Manuel Neuer or, uh, or you know, Alisson not saving the goal, people will just say, OK, that was a shot, it goes in. But because it's Kepa, people are saying, oh, he shouldn't have been beaten. Another goalkeeper mm. wouldn't have considered the goal. It's an easy argument to make because right. you can't replay that situation. But of course, perception also creates reality. And unless the team also themselves feel Kepa is the right man, you will have those doubts actually having an effect on the pitch as well. And I think that's why they need addressing it. I just wonder with Kepa as well, what kind of teammate he is. You know, I, I get a sense that he's not 
he's not he's quite a spiky character you know he had his problems under Sari as well with that sort of infamous he's not coming off the pitch and I think Lampard puts a lot of emphasis on that you know he, he speaks about good teammates and and good professionals and I just wonder whether he's got a question mark over Kepa with that as well. So what what is success then for Chelsea this season? Frank was under pressure last season, you know, the trend, no, 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 not signing players, losing Hazard, and he exceeded expectations. Now he's brought all those players into the football club, over £200 million spent. What is success then? I think success this season is getting closer to Liverpool and Manchester City. I don't think you can expect them to, to win the league. I don't think you can expect them to push either side close. But what you can't do is to be 30-odd points behind, as they were last year. What if they were 15 points behind Liverpool, close the gap, but finish fifth? <laughs> that, would, that would be not good. Because, uh, well, which one is it then? Because, no, it has to be, it's not either or. I think if you finish 15 points behind either of them, you have a good chance of actually making top four, okay? But um, you need to be both. You need to be in the top four. That is always the minimum target for any Chelsea manager. So it's top four, not closing the gap? No, it's both. Top four in, that, in itself is not going to be enough. If you ask me what success really? is, yeah, success with this team doing the same as you did last year cannot be success because you yeah. put all these spend new players. Spend a lot of money. You spend, have to improve. A lot of money. You have to improve. You're not going to be improving by necessarily picking up an extra yeah, 30 so, points. So you need to pick up an extra Chelsea 20 finish, points. If Chelsea finish in the top four and the gap's still quite big, that's not success. No, that would be not enough progress uh, that I would expect. <laughs> <laughs> it's, ma it's maintenance of success. Yeah. Because as I said, I, I That's think... That's flattering. You want to so get... They finish you with want to Arsenal, forward. If they finish above Arsenal, who've just won two trophies under Arteta, you know, doing exceptionally well. If they finish above Spurs, who look like they're going to get Gareth Bale, you know, with Harry Kane. If they finish above a fantastic Wolves side, you know, Everton, who have bought well. If, if, if Frank finished in the top four this season, that's not success. If they're 30 points behind Liverpool or Manchester City... But does it matter how far point, yeah, points if, if you get a top yeah, four? No, it does, because they're spending all this money not to consolidate top four position. Chelsea are spending this money to be, once again, real contenders. And Lampard needs to show that he can take this team forward. Just doing the same with all these new players, as he did last year when he didn't have those players... That's not going to be considered mm. success. The debate has begun. Good, good. Like yeah, good so. yeah. uh, all right, Chelsea have some big <laughs> new names, as we know, for this game. And their German double act are ready to take on Liverpool's defence in our key clash this week. Are Chelsea's <laughs> new German recruits settling in? We can hear from one of them now, Timo Werner, who sat down to meet the media earlier this week. Yeah, at first, I think um, to achieve with uh, Chelsea, I want to, I come here to win titles, of course. And Chelsea is a, a big club. It's a, a club who always want to win and for me, um, I'm a player, I always want to win every game. I'm looking forward to the game um, because um, yeah, you have a lot of good teams but I think you have with Liverpool one of the best teams in the world and uh, they win the league last year and they have the, the same team as last year so they would be strong as last year so it was, would be a really good challenge for us. Well, he seems pretty settled in England already, Rafa, and you also met him earlier this week with The Athletic. Tell us what you found and, and what he's like as a person. How much is he enjoying the Premier League? Well, he came across in a very similar way that he did now in the Zoom interview. He's, he seems really happy to be at Chelsea. He made a point of getting there early, ahead of everyone else, to settle down, to find his feet, both on a training pitch, but also when it comes to adjusting to a new, a new uh, league, a new um, town, a new language, all these things. And he seems just very happy. I think he feels that he's at a place that uh, is exciting. I think that youthfulness, that sense of a team growing together, going forward, creating something new, is something that's hugely appealing not just to him, but also to Kai Havertz, who, of course, had Werner as the, the pioneer, if you will, and perhaps made it easier for him to then make that decision, knowing Werner had already gone there. But a player, I think, who relishes um, the opportunity to, to show what he can do. I mean, there is... Underneath that really easygoing, smiling demeanor, there is a pretty hard-nosed, tough, very, very driven, very ambitious player who's um, not always chosen the easiest route when it goes to, you know, how he plays at kind of the kind of club he chooses. And I think he is absolutely keen to show that in the Premier League. What qualities do the likes of Havertz and Werner have then that Chelsea were perhaps missing last season? Well, two very different players. Um, I think what Werner will bring is that 
that third final efficiency to finishing the movement. His goals went through the roof last year, went to another level. He's got the kind of pace, the kind of attributes that, especially in the Premier League, where games tend to stretch a little bit um, towards the final, uh, final stages of a game, is going to be absolutely key. Everyone who want, everybody wants to have a fast centre forward. I mean, it's, it's a given. With Harvard, I think it's a little bit different. Harvard's almost, I think, will be, I don't want to say tasked with slowing things down, but I think his uh, main mission is to find solutions in smaller spaces. Chelsea often struggled last year when it came against, came against defensive sides, especially at Stamford Bridge, where there is a lot of pace, a lot of tempo, but when there's no space ahead of these guys, Hudson Odoi and Mason Mount, then the ball kind of went back and went from one flank to the next and then went to the midfield and back. And the, the crowd and players got very frustrated. Harvard has this ability to play between the lines, find spaces, find the final ball, join up with attack. And I think, especially at home against those kind of sides, he will solve a problem that Chelsea saw last season. Mm. And what about Thiago? Looks like um, you know a lot of criticism for Liverpool on the opening day, you know, conceding three, but they won the game. They got criticised. It looks like they're bringing in Thiago. What a player. Yeah, I mean, a player that is obviously well-renowned, has done so much at Munich. Um, I quite like Liverpool's transfer policy, actually, because it's not always about adding lots of players. You know, we saw it. Um, you know, Klopp, has, Klopp really believes in his team. This team is, you know, is one of the best teams in the world, if not the best team in the world. You don't always have to add. It's about that continuity. Um, but, you know, Thiago will, will, will come in. We don't know whether Wijnaldum's going. Um, yeah, another big personality, another player that will, you know, add to the, to the you know, growing personality and, and success of Liverpool. What will he bring, Raf? I mean, he'll bring a lot of um, things that this Liverpool team perhaps are a little bit short on, which is what the short midfield, on? the midfield, um, the ability to pick a pass in the in the final third, the ability to dribble past players. He's one of those midfielders who plays at times like a winger because he just manages through his technique to just walk or, or run past players in midfield, and that opens up the space immediately. Um, his passing range is superb. He is easily the most gifted of those midfielders. Is he a have. six or an eight or both? He or wants to be a ten. He, he wants be, to be a ten. He can do anything. I think he's most effective for a ball playing team in a deeper role. Right. But Liverpool are slightly more different. They're slightly more back and forth, slightly more um, rock and roll. I was going to say. <laughs> um, I think an eight is probably the ideal position in this team. But he can play absolutely anywhere. But there's another factor that we should mention when you say what does he bring to this team? He is the first fully formed star player that Liverpool have bought since Klopp was there. Yeah. All the other players have been players who are in their mid-twenties or, or even younger. Klopp and Klopp coach. is developing them and he's working with them and collectively they're going to the next level. He's the first guy, and I think that's a reflection also where Liverpool are now versus to where they were a few years ago. He said, OK, I'm yeah. going to go in. I think everyone's going to enjoy having this kind of character in the dressing room. I just want a great signing, there's no doubt about that. I just wonder with Liverpool whether they'll regret not bringing in another forward in the event their front three, who are the best, get injured. You know, who is the replacement for a Mo Salah, a Firmino, a Sané? They have great you know, hopes for Minamino. Minamino, We haven't yes. seen it yet, but they, but they think on, that he can do it. They missed out on Werner. You know, obviously Werner chose Chelsea, but there was speculation around Werner going there. If those front three get injured, where are the goals coming from from Liverpool? Yes, they've signed. You know, is, is Thiago going to add to the goals that, no. you know, in the event those front three, it's, oh. it's not, there's not a lot of depth there. Yeah. 